Hey guys, welcome to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Thursday evening. I hope we're all okay. Hope we're all right. I hope the day has treated you all as well as it possibly could have treated you. It is pretty wet and miserable outside, so if you're in England, stay indoors and relax. Watch some Olympics. In this video, though, we are talking the man himself, Richarlison, kind of ending all transfer talk himself. We're going to be talking about Dominic Solanke. We're going to be talking about Spurs and their interest in other players. Well, not named at least, but in positions-wise. Emerson Real's deal. Man or Solomon. So much to talk about. So much to get into. Just want to say that if you're watching this and you're new, subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And we got a lot to get into, so we better not dilly-dally. So I'm going to start with uh, Solanke news, first and foremost, because... It's on my screen. So the Mail Sports saying that uh, Tottenham Hotspur believe they can bring in Bournemouth striker Dominic Slanky before the start of the season, um, which is nice. It very much is nice. So I won't, uh, I won't deny that. I won't be upset about that. Uh, I think we'll all be happy if we bring in a new guy before the start of the season. It's definitely needed. It's definitely something that. I won't deny it. it would have been nice to have it already sorted or near enough sorted. But if it is before the start of the season, he can feature in the game against Leicester. It's something, you know what I mean? It is something, but we shall see on that one. Well, and we want to talk about Richarlison because I talked about this ridiculous report surrounding the fact that Richarlison to Saudi Arabia is going to be able to fund the move for Solanke. That has been turned out to be incorrect. The Solanke move is not dependent on Richarlison. And I even told, I even said that to all of you in the video that I did about it. The The, the money is there to buy Solanke. No issues to buy Solanke. Richarlison being sold or kept has absolutely no effect on that deal. I ironically was proven correct. And... Um, it came out really a few hours ago and Brazilian reports saying that there's interest in Tottenham Hotspur forward Richarlison from Saudi Arabia. However, Brazilian has no intention to leave Spurs during this summer transfer window. Uh, Richarlison did go on to talk himself saying the money is big when talking about Saudi Arabia, but my dreams are bigger. And that is a cold line. So Richarlison here to stay. And I said, Adesolanki, you keep a Richarlison, you've got Sonny out on the left, you add in a right winger, that feels a huge, huge upgrade on that starting eleven. Because then if you do have a featuring cast of, you know, Johnson, Werners and Kulisevskis and, you know, either a Slanky or a Charleston, you know, that in just the attack alone with Mikey Moore and Lancashire is quality depth, but depth that Spurs just have not had. It's one of the key reasons why the season last year went so awry was literally the quality of depth. So it's great that that's the situation. I'm very happy Richarlison staying. I would, I would have been upset had he gone and Solanke came in. But if you're keeping Richarlison and getting a Solanke, oh, sign me up. Sign me up. That is a huge bit of news, that. So happy days. And yeah, I'm happy Richarlison. Yeah, we like Richarlison here at Spurs. We're quite good on this channel. We do like Richarlison. Um, Tom Barkley's talking about it, saying that he understood that Spurs would be open to selling Richarlison for the right price, but the signing of the new forward would not be dependent on the Brazilian sale. So there you go. There you go. End of story, hey? Emerson Real News, because I, I said, oh, it might be bad news. And I, I was a bit like, mm, it's come from an English source. What about the Italian sources? Let me wait for them. And you were, you and I were so right in just waiting for them. Matteo, Matteo Moretto saying that the deal is very close. Milan haven't shifted their focus elsewhere, despite rumours from England. There is very little left to do to complete the deal. I also saw other Italian sources saying it could be done nearly as today or tomorrow. That was Demarzio. So, do you know what? Not all bad. Not all bad. Happy days from a potentially you know negative morning or. I guess, early afternoon when you saw it to a much more positive situation. You know, we are still moving off of Emerson Real. Richie's staying. We're looking to get Solanke done before the start of the window. All bits of good news. Uh, moving on a little bit, Tom Barkley again saying that Spurs have also, uh, also have their eye on signing a marquee winger before the summer transfer window deadline. Well, again, it's necessary. It's, well, it's needed, 
but it's welcomed. And a, a new winger and a new striker with Son going out left feels like a brand new front three. It really does. And, I, and I'm here for it. I'm absolutely, I'm so here for it. You know, I think Archie Gray is a wonderful signing. I'm really looking forward to him in this Spurs team, you know, featuring between sort of the six, the eight and the um, and the two. Really excited for his uh, continued development through those positions. You know, I think I think people are over egging and over overestimating certain things from preseason. I'm looking forward to the guys all getting back together. And doing what we do best, and that's playing some sexy angeball. And we do play some sexy football. I really do think we play some of the best football in the league easily, you know. So a little bit there. Um, to f- give you a bit of stuff, uh, a, bit of, a bit of stuff, a bit of news on Manuel Solomon. So TBR, take it with a pinch of salt, uh, saying that Brighton, Leicester and Wolves have all inquired about the signing of Manuel Solomon. Uh, they said Spurs are keen to sell him permanently, but a loan deal with option buyers most likely. I don't think Spurs are that keen on selling him. I talked about it in a different video. I don't think Spurs are that keen on selling him. But if you were to say, look at those three teams, Brighton have got a lot of wingers. They, they're not going to be involved with Manuel Solomon. Um, I mean, they're looking to move off of Buenanote, so it's not going to be him. Leicester City, I think, yeah, you maybe could have a situation there, but Mavadidi plays on the left wing and he was pretty good for him last season. And with Wolves, you could see a Wolves situation because actually if you were to factor in Pedro Neto, you could say to them, look, I know it's getting a little bit later into the window. We've got Manuel Solomon. Here's a loan deal. Give us Pedro Neto. We'll even, you know, take on Manuel's wages if we can reduce some of the price from Pedro Neto. And you've got a bit of a replacement there at least. You've got a, you've got a body that you can bring in straight away, you know. Ben Proven, there's always something you can say. And for a Wolves team, be very, very solid. Um, and I just want to finish off with some Romero quotes from ESPN Argentina. Because I want to bring this in. Because I think a lot of people go, Andy, our defence is not good enough. Um, Romero talking about if he's the best defender in the world. said, I'm not the best, but I don't put myself in that analysis. Romero, you're bloody great. You're, you are the best in my opinion. I wouldn't have any other defender in the world over you. It's nice to be told that, but I live day by day to go to training, to keep in learning and trying to improve, to value my teammates and take positives from them. I don't put that title on myself at all. There are too many players. I want to see where my maximum is. That is my motivation. It's not easy to be a starter of the Argentina national team and play in the best league in the world. I have won everything. I'm trying to keep that in my head. Build the team around the player. I can't keep stressing enough when I read things that he says and how he acts and leads build a team around him. He's a vice captain. Sonny's obviously the captain. He's the captain of the defense. Sonny's the captain of the attack. Just call it the way it is. Build the team around Romero. When Romero, uh, Van der Ven, Adogi and Porro all started, we conceded only just over one goal a game, which would have had us as the fourth best defense in the league. So if you don't think we've got a great defense, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't. But anyway, anyway, that's the end of it. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like on the video if you'd hit me in the comments section down below. Your thoughts and feelings about Romero as the best defender in the world. Solomon, Emerson, Solanke, Richie, all that news. Obviously, subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, end of the video. I will see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.